At the end of the 18th century, a wonderful garden with waterfalls, fountains and lakes with unprecedented foreign vegetation appeared on the right bank of Ukraine, in the middle of the steppe silent wasteland. A true English landscape park writ large was also called an island of ancient culture. It was decorated with sculptures of famous French and Italian masters. Today, after more than 200 years, Safivka Park remains a model of landscape art. Brockhaus and Efron wrote in their dictionary about the Uman Garden that it is not inferior in luxury and decoration to either the Versailles in the suburbs of Paris, the Sanssouci Park in Potsdam or the famous Italian Boboli Gardens in Florence. Modern Safivka is one of the seven wonders of Ukraine. Where, if not here, can you find yourself on the Champs-Élysées covered in romance and in the silence of the alleys of the English Park? Here you will be amazed by the beauty of the landscapes of Little Switzerland and get lost in the Cretan labyrinth. And you'll be overcome in the underground river Styx along with Charon transported sinful souls to hell to test yourself for courage. At every step of the 154 hectares of the park, exotic plants brought from different parts of the world amaze and delight visitors. Now there are about 3000 species and varieties and each of them has its own place and mission. The fame of Safivka was far beyond the borders of the Commonwealth, as well as a love story that inspired one of the richest people of the 18th century, Count Stanislav Potocki, to create a paradise on Earth. The landscape park in the city of Uman was a romantic gift to his beautiful wife Sofia. Ah, the 18th century, the kingdom of reason, the century of enlightenment and the century of park obsession. Noble aristocrats simply contracted this love for beauty like a contagious disease. But for Stanislav Potocki, a descendant of the uncrowned king of right bank Ukraine, Safivka was not a tribute to fashion. Having inherited the wealth of one and a half million hectares of land, and 500,000 serf souls, he could afford any expenses. Therefore, he could confess his love in the form of creating a spectacular park, thus making a broad gesture. It was only at the age of 39 that the titled, highly respected and wealthy Stanislav finally fell in love for the first time. Although the marriage with Sofia was not the only one in his life. The first youthful crush on Gertrude Komarovska from a noble, though impoverished family ended in tragedy. The second wife, Josefina Amalia Mnishik, by the will of her parents, was the court lady of Catherine. In this marriage there were 11 children, 7 boys and 4 daughters. But apparently, the love that the Count dreamed of was not there. Only later he met Sofia. Potocki's love for Sofia was so strong that neither church condemnation nor human gossip could ruin their happiness. The first seven years they lived together unmarried. Neither he nor she were able to break their previous marriage bonds. In order that the couple would not be bored, the Count drove his dearly beloved to enjoy the surroundings of the city of Uman. Here was just a wild wasteland, with rugged ravines and strewn with blocks of wild granite, a space almost devoid of trees. There were three old pear trees in the upper part, several oaks and linden trees and stunted willows along the small river Kamyanka. Sofia liked this place and her intuition told her that it was truly possible to set up a wonderful garden here. The area, in spite of its savagery, was quite suitable for creating a romantic corner. 
The river Bahno flowed along the bottom of the central draw, which over time was renamed into more palatable Kamenka. A prerequisite for the English landscape garden was the presence of granite. Sofiivka was very lucky. Below us is 40 meters deep into granite. Here is the natural exit of granite to the surface. This is granite of volcanic origin, and there is no other. The British, in order to annoy the French with their regular gardens, turned to China to gain some experience. Granite, according to the Feng Shui theory and according to other ancient theories, was taken as a basis. So granite given peace and granite is the symbol of hardness and strength. It represents the male principle. Huge randomly laid blocks of granite form the Cretan labyrinth. Similar objects in parks of the 18th century are not uncommon. They directed a person to a philosophical understanding of what is happening. In life, as in the maze, you constantly have to make a choice. Although the author of the project and the construction manager, military engineer Ludwig Metzel, sometimes had no choice. Creating a composition of granite blocks, multi-ton stones had to be moved. The method of how this was done is known. Stones were watered in winter and turned into icy blocks, transported with the help of ropes and harnessed oxen, serfs. They poured water, which froze, and the stones were dragged along icy paths. They created the necessary compositions. The park is embellished with a huge number of such man-made compositions. Laying a stone on a stone, weighing from 50 to 200 tons, they erected walls that propped up the bulk of the blocks. So the Tempe rock appeared and then chaos was formed. A fashionable element in landscape gardening art, symbolizing the epicenter of the fault. This is another philosophical allegory. Everything starts from chaos. After going through a natural cycle, all will turn into chaos. In Safivka, blocks of chaos also create the lower part of a large waterfall. Thus, the picture came to life. The big waterfall is behind us. Its upper part is man-made. And the lower part is laid down by nature. In 1810, Prince Dolgoruki visited this place. The great traveler he wrote in a magazine, by land and by sea, a note entitled Whoever has the desire to see paradise, go to Safiivka. The park was built very quickly. Over six years from autumn 1796 to May 1802, the Uman wonder was created. The workers dug ponds and an underground river built waterfalls and fountains, laid alleys, carried stone blocks and erected architectural structures. Exotic plants were brought to the park from all over the world. These were huge exotic plants from 15 to 50 years old, large-sized. They were delivered in special barrels with a lump of earth watered all the way. Pyramidal poplars, tropical and subtropical species were brought from the Mediterranean Sea, the Balkans and Italy, which astounded, delighted and surprised all visitors to the park who saw this beautiful wonder of nature. In order for the plants to take root, the landscapers created the necessary conditions. Fertile land was delivered from nearby villages by carts, whole valleys were covered with layers. About 2,000 serfs worked on the creation of the park. It is hard to imagine how such a titanic work was done to turn the wilderness into a fairy tale park. Walking along the alleys of the park, one is surrounded by Cupid and Plato, Hermes and Apollo. Here, every corner seems to be an illustration of the legends and myths of ancient Greece. A snake from a bronze mouth of which a stream of water rushes into the sky and breaks into magic jams is one of the mythological characters. The snake here is also not by accident. 
The insidious snake slipped between the branches. The mother bird screamed loudly, but the snake swallowed all eight of her chicks. The ninth one to be swallowed was the mother bird, and then the snake was petrified. Grottoes of Calypso, Diana and Thetis, pavilions of the goddess Flora and Venus, sculptures of ancient Greek gods and poets were created by the best Italian and French masters. Everything was arranged in the park to remind Sofia Potocka of her distant presumed homeland, which was shrouded in myths. We even know from the legend that at the old Istanbul market on a hot July afternoon either a Turkish, a Greek or maybe even a gypsy woman sold two girls, 13-year-old Sofia and 15-year-old Maria, a halo of mystery and some kind of harem past, like a train from a dress, lasted all her life. We probably will never know the truth about her, but this girl managed to win over both August Poniatowski, the King of Poland, who appeared at glitzy and highly entertaining balls with her, and the Austrian Emperor Joseph II. The 18th century was the century of enlightenment and reason. This is the bright period when one could reach the aristocratic Olympus through his or her own labor. In that period, they looked at beauties of common origin differently. Manners, intelligence and the ability to present oneself in society were more valuable. Sophia succeeded so brilliantly that even kings could not resist her. She was enthusiastically received at the courts of Paris and St. Petersburg. With her charm, she overshadowed the most noble beauties of Europe. The park of love, love at every turn. Any path changes the entire landscape, captivates and attracts the attention of practically all visitors of this wonder. Even a small, artificially created oasis in the center of the upper pond was called the Island of Love. Surrounded by slender beauties, pyramidal poplars, it is still fanned by the romance of bright feelings. The pink pavilion in the Renaissance style is a meeting place, but of another crowned couple. Eldest son Alexander was the pride of his father and a patriot of Poland. He took part in the Polish revolt for independence. For this, Uman and the Sofievka Park were confiscated from him and put under the jurisdiction of the Kiev Treasury Chamber. After this, Tsar Nikolai gifted the park to his wife Empress Alexandra Fedorovna and renamed it into Tsaritsyn Park. Since 1836, Sofievka began a new stage. The park became the property of the imperial family of Russia. Keeping the idea of the creators of the park and the prevailing atmosphere of love, the new owners added additional features to the architecture of Safivka. In addition to the pink pavilion, on the banks of the lower pond appeared the magnificent pavilion of Flora. The entrance gate of the park was also the creation of the court architect Andrei Stuckenschneider. Like the palaces of St. Petersburg, created according to his project, the structures of Safivka are world-class architectural masterpieces. Times changed. Safivka experienced the influence of different eras, but invariably remained the human miracle that surprises, delights and amazes people.